What's going on, y'all? We're back here in my home state for the Virginia gun season, and stuff is about to start dropping. He's 150 yards and closing. He's coming to this corner. We gotta go. The way he's moving, he's gonna start coming right in front of the logging road that we're on. I got the field pod out, and I'm resting the 308 on it, and he steps out right in frame. Oh, that happened quick. Telltale sign is lung blood and bone fragments, you know? Now, it is a tradition in my family, in my culture, in my community, to do what's called a deer drive. So with that said, if you're a hater and you don't want to watch deer drives, turn the channel. For the rest of you, this is going to be pretty cool. Had her rolling on that one. <laughs> oh, did you say you got her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. She never quit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we might have a fish fry after all. That's a pretty good one right here, too. Well, if it ain't Mike Concho himself. Boy, I think I see something shiny. Can you see that? Thank you, Lord. Whew. Well, I'm neat as gravel, I'm poor as dirt. And I like things better the way they work. Well, I'm strong in the head, but I get things done. I spend too much money to have a little fun. Come on. What's going on, y'all? We're back here in my home state for the Virginia gun season, and stuff is about to start dropping. That's right, this week we might do a spot and stalk, we might sit a deer stand, we might even do a few deer drives for y'all. So if you're one of those highfalutin hunters that don't believe in deer drives and all that good stuff, then maybe you should just change the channel. Had it rolling on that one. I'm done. I'm all done. Scared up the Addy or something, I don't know. I'm like a lot of you guys. I used to watch all the Primos videos and the Realtree videos, Monster Bucks. And when I was in college, I made a pilot TV show, kind of just for fun. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking, if I can get this thing on TV and get some sponsors, maybe one day I can go places like Montana and kill big deer and go to Iowa and Illinois. I mean, it was basically like the people that I saw that were made their living in the hunting industry and were doing very well killing monster deer and elk and everything else they were like you don't want any part of this do we and i was like i, I think i i kind of think i do well i mean i don't want to get hung over it doesn't give you a hangover well i mean you know i don't want to get addicted to it or anything it's not habit forming sounds like i kind of want it just wanted y'all to know i did a full spread for whitetail magazine i mean it made me draw my bow and take all these pictures. It was, it was weird. One of the things over the years that's kind of switched is my interest in management. So I went from being, I want to be away from where I live to where the big bucks live. You know what I mean? I want to chase stuff on the road. I want to go after big elk. I want to chase down big whitetails in the Midwest. But now I'm getting more and more into the land management side here so we can grow big bucks and have good hunting around where I grew up. You know, the first year that I had to take off from the Lyme disease, I had to stay off the road completely, stay at the house just to recover, get my immune system back up where it needed to be. And I actually killed my biggest buck that I've ever killed in Virginia. Uh. Well, this is him, man. We came out here to take pictures of him today. Had him on ice last night. He's still packed full of ice right now, so we're gonna go cut him up here in a minute in the barn, but. So during bow season, I killed a couple does and the first buck off my new property. Scoff at this deer if you want to, but so far, I have got the biggest deer in Virginia of anybody in my family. Until Addison decided to take the Barnett crossbow out during bow season and smoke this big old buck. Just had to one-up her daddy. I might not have the biggest buck in the family right now, but I'm gonna kill the biggest critter in the family this year, I guarantee it. Because this year, I was introduced to bear hunting with dogs. 
which is something I've never done before. And it actually ended up being both amazing and miserable because I wasn't in shape enough to do 200 wind sprints in a row, and that's basically what we had to do. But it was worth it because I killed a 550 pound black bear with my rifle. Up to this point in the season, I've been on the road mostly bow hunting, and I'm excited to get back to my short barrel 308. So my buddy Brian calls me up and says, hey man, why don't y'all come hunt with us for a couple days? And I was super excited to get out there because like I said earlier in the show, Brian meticulously manages this place for whitetails. I mean, he only wants to kill giant bucks. You get three tags in Virginia a year, and I guarantee you, if Brian or his son punches a tag, it's going to be a nice buck. When something's unnatural, you can just tell. That's why I use full range hanging systems to give all my mounts that natural look, like God intended. I'll have the uh, spaghetti and meat balls. Uh, not the balls. I'll have a uh, tick check, please. SKB cases protect all your hunting gear. And they're also good for splitting firewood. Olympic training! How about a little Taekwondo? Joe Rogan. Yeah, how about we Taekwon don't? So we busted out the 308 and made sure she was sighted in, and we headed out across the river to Brian's place to check out this new farm. So we get there, we're really excited. This is a good spot. We ease into this box blind, and before we go piling in it, I just eased up on the ladder and look, and out in the beans is a hammer of a mature buck, and he's coming right to us. He's a big frame deer. He's a, he's a shooter. He's a shooter. He's walking. He's walking this way. Oh, he's coming kind of fast. I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, he's coming. He's coming. Yeah, he's 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 150 yards and closing. He's coming to this corner. We gotta go. We're getting the road to cut him off. This buck is not wasting any time. So we climb down the ladder, we get back out on the logging road and we start to sneak toward him because the way he's moving, he's gonna start coming right in front of the logging road that we're on. Just stay in these, in these shadows. He's gonna walk right across here in, that, in those low beams. So we just stayed on foot. We got down this logging road I got the field pod out and I'm resting the 308 on it and he steps out right in frame. Get right here. Get ready. I didn't have time to put my call in here, bro. I rung my bell a little bit, but he's bumping blood too. Quarter and two. He looked like a big, I shot him for a big six, and I noticed like at the last second he's got a little crab claws at the end. He might even be able to get another full hand. Shoot a coyote or something. Oh, that happened quick. Did you get him like this? <laughs> hey, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what kind of buck he is. I just saw him at 200 yards. He had a big old frame, and he walked around the corner. And me and Mike are on foot, and then it was like he he started running. I saw his antlers through these briars, and he starts running at me. Holy crap! That was cool, man. He's a big deer, though. Big body. Let's go get him. <laughs> I mean, we'll give him a minute. Did you see all that blood coming out of him on the other side? Thank you, Lord. That was awesome. I'm gonna tell you what, that's the way to start your hunt right there. Go ahead and shoot a big mature buck right off the bat. And then you get your whole evening. It's nice and relaxing. You can just be in nature and you don't have any pressure or anything on you. That's the way I like to do it. And boy, when he came, he was right on top of us. He was in bow range. I wish I had my Hoyt when he came around the corner. Quarter and two, 
put it right on the point of his shoulder. Saw him when he turned around. He had blood all dumping out the back of him, right in the center of his rib cage. It's the first kill with the 308. <clears throat> this is a short barrel, 13 and a half inch barrel, shooting uh, true velocity ammunition out of it. And it's, it's mean. But it put it on him. Let's go see where he is. He couldn't have gone far. I think he just made it into these pines right here. <laughs> Telltale sign is lung blood and bone fragments, you know. Mm hmm. Good blood right now, first way. I think I see something shiny. Who's that? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Go to RedArrowTV.com to check out all our Red Arrow gear. Whether you're a patriot, a rocker, or you want to get to know some federal agents, check out all our Red Arrow gear at RedArrowTV.com. Red Arrow weapons, now I got a 350 Legend, baby. <laughs> you guys run out and check it out, man. Order yours today. This is the one right here, baby. <laughs> Telltale sign is lung blood and bone fragments, you know. Well, if it ain't Mike Concho himself. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at the neck on this dude, man. Holy cow. <clears throat> Holy cow. That's why I thought he was at, I thought he was a big, <laughs> the six when I saw him come around. Then I noticed that when he was, when he was running away already dead. That's a good deer though, man. Big old mature Virginia deer. He's not, he's not by any means the biggest deer we got out here for sure. But he's a stud, man. That's a sure enough stud. I'm kind of whisper celebrating because I want to go maybe kill this other coal buck they got that they want gone. And it feels good to come home and knock one down, man. Because we have been on a we have been on a non-killing kick, which is something we don't like to do on red arrows too much. Man, that's a pretty buck. Dude, he is all rutted up too. Big old neck and his body's like skin and bones. Gosh, that's a pretty deer. I, I get used to that. Just go ahead and shoot the big buck right when you get out there. And then you got a leisurely evening of Watch another deer. So I grabbed this buck and drug him up under the blind because we still had time to hunt. In Virginia, you can kill two deer a day. We saw some does, some younger bucks, and a really nice young ten, but nothing else that was worth shooting on that evening. Got back to the house and Cat's Aunt Martha wanted to learn how to skin a deer, so perfect opportunity to teach somebody how to skin a deer. So the camera guys that I work with all are big ice fishermen, which I've never done. But when they come into town in Virginia, they say, let's go down to the pond and fish in January, which I never thought to do because it's hunting season. It's not time to fish. But we decided to take a break from the hunting and go down to the pond and do a little southern ice fishing.
I also got to thank my boy John Godwin and my boy Justin Martin for turning me on to Fin Commander baits. That is exclusively what I fish for crappy with now. And I got to say, they're the best I've ever used. And again, I'm not sponsored or obligated to say that. I just had to thank those boys because it's some mean fishing lures, man. And we were catching piles and piles of crappy. Now, it is a tradition in my family, in my culture, in my community to do what's called a deer drive. So with that said, if you're a hater and you don't want to watch deer drives, turn the channel. For the rest of you, this is going to be pretty cool. So we're going to surround a little block of woods and do a little push. And if you guys have seen the show in the past, you might recognize this because every time we do this drive, I sit in the same spot and kill deer. And I'm hoping today's going to be no different. This has been a last day tradition for Ryan and Holland and me for some time now. And we grew up hunting together. We grew up riding four wheelers, man. We were always together since we were in preschool, basically. And Holland just recently lost both his mother and his father, not too far apart. And it was definitely hard because, you know, Holland's dad used to come on these drives. He'd make a lot of the drives with us and we grew up hunting with him. And so Dick and Lynn, this deer drive is dedicated to you. You want to swing through them and shoot like basically right out in front of their nose. You know what I mean? You should never think about other people being that close to you hunting. Okay. I'll slow you down up and I'll show you where just in case one kicks out of this cutter rule. No, you just you click it off and you got two shots. Okay. Same trigger, two shots. Like right. click off safety, bam bam. A little bit of credit maybe. No, they're gonna, hopefully they'll run right down this woods road right to you, like right in your lap, blam, right in the face. So we drop Addison off at this spot and I go down to my favorite place on the power line and we're actually thinking that based on where the deer moved into, they're gonna be getting up and running by Addison. So we're hoping the deer are gonna run by her. But of course, a couple does come running right at me. Like he got in there to make it and shot that deer and that's probably what sent them this way instead of sending them. It's just something about forearm shivering a doe in the neck, head, and shoulders with a bunch of double-odd buck while she's running wide open across a broom straw field. It's like Christmas morning. I dropped the first one. I thought I had it on the second one pretty good, and blam, and just kept going, so. You're allowed two deer a day in Virginia, and lo and behold, here comes another deer. Right here, right here. Coming right to us, yeah. Had it rolling on that one. I'm done. I'm all done. Guess if one comes out now, I can just be like scared up to Addy or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, they can't take too much of that. Back straps for the Campbell family. I'm telling you, man, it's not a bad little spot right here. <laughs> I feel bad. I should. I, I, I wanted to sit together, but then they might have run that way, you know, yeah. like, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Because they run that way a lot, actually. Close. There's another one. Do you see that one? Yeah, I uh -huh. did. it keep going? Yeah. Or did it bed down? It kept going. Kept going, like, yeah. out of sight? Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't see The boat from here to the power pole. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, the did you see? the big doe stopped and just almost. Oh, did you say you got her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. She never twitched. <laughs> I think you double off box hit her right upside the head. Yeah, that's where I shot both of these in the head with that double lock, man. Jacking up those. I can see how a fella would derive a lot of pleasure and satisfaction from that. I want to give a big thanks to Holland's parents, Dick and Lynn White. They were role models. They set the standard. They helped raise us, and they will be very much missed. We had a good time on the show this week, jacking up a good buck and killing some nose on some deer drives. We'll be back next week. Don't forget to stop by the online store because it's super important because the lights in here literally need to stay on from that. And only you can prevent forest fires. I don't know what I'm talking about, but we'll see you next week right here on Red Arrow. I did a full spread 
for Whitetail Magazine. I mean, they made me draw my bow and take all these pictures. It was it was weird. 